Good afternoon, everyone. This is Trisha from Underwriters Marketing Service. A couple minor little housekeeping things to get out of the way. First of all, this is intended for financial professionals only, and this session is being recorded. We also do have everyone in listen-only mode, so please type your questions into the question box. It should be located on the right-hand side of your screen, and just answer, type in questions as they come up. We'll answer them either throughout the course of the presentation or if time allows, we will have a question and answer session at the end. So now that all that's out of the way, we can officially get started. Good afternoon. We're very excited to have Kevin Fisher from One America here with us today. And he actually has said he has more than 10 sales ideas. So I don't think anyone's going to object that he's over delivering what he promised, which is pretty typical of One America. They have a great product portfolio and so many different ways to structure it. One of the biggest questions I always get is, but I don't know which way to go for my client. I don't know which client would fit which solution. And that's part of what Kevin is going to be going over with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin Fisher. Kevin? Hey, thanks, Tricia. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be going through a few of our sales ideas uh, that we at One America have. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the company, and I think you should be, be between uh, myself and, and uh, Brad Shepard in la the last few years, you, you probably got a pretty heavy dose of who we are at One America. But just a reminder, uh, we're a mutual company headquartered in Indianapolis. Our Comdex is 95, so we sit in the, in the right place in terms of uh, what our uh, advisors uh, are seeking in terms of financial stability and ratings and all that stuff. Just a reminder where we fit, we are an innovator in the asset-based long-term care world. Uh, there are only two carriers that have uh, the experience that we at One America have. Uh, one is us, and the other is our friends on the other side of the river from you in Philadelphia. Uh, we both introduced our asset-based life insurance product in the late 80s. Uh, in the late 90s, uh, we at One America introduced annuity care and uh, have continued to innovate uh, going forward. We offer the only true joint uh, long-term care product that's on a life or annuity chassis. We only the, the offer the only lifetime benefit on the uh, asset-based chassis, again, life or annuity. And we have more funding options than I know what to talk about. So that being said, we got a ton of stuff going on. Again, uh, thanks for joining us and let's get rolling. Basically, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to talk about, I have 10, it says 10 opportunities. There's some more stuff in there that we're going to weave in and out, and you're going to catch catch on to them pretty quick. But the first thing I want to do is set down the baseline, where we're at. And when we wrap up, I want to share with the, with you uh, a couple of, couple of resources and idea receptacles for you so that you don't have to just wait for webcasts. You can just go and find some things. So remember, when we're talking about what we at One America do, we do a long-term care planning solution. And not just one solution, but many. In this presentation, and if you've seen me before, I jump between long-term care and extended health care. Look, they're basically synonymous. What, it, in fact, we're talking about is the services and support for someone that may need that care. That care doesn't necessarily need to be permanent. Remember, long-term care insurance can be for a limited duration of time or a long duration of time, and that malady that creates it can be a recoverable event. A stroke is recoverable. A broken hip is recoverable. That stuff could be the root for a long-term care claim. And remember that care can be received either at home or in a facility. And what we've been saying and what was driven home this last year is that care at home is much more desirable than in a facility. And one thing that we all say is with a, with a funded plan, you can stay at home as long as you can, as long as you want, until the health circumstances warrant that you need assistance in another facility, but it keeps you at home. It doesn't send you away. 
remember when we're talking about qualifying for benefits, the definition for qualifying, and this is universal for long-term care, is the inability to perform two of the six activities of daily living that you see on the left, or to be cognitively impaired. If you're cognitively impaired, you don't need to qualify from an ADL perspective. You need to be diagnosed with your with with that inability uh, by your healthcare provider, and you need a written plan of care in place. This is universal. Every carrier has that same criteria. Heck, it's even in the HIPAA code. And remember, those causes do not need to be a permanent situation. It doesn't need to be a case where you're in a nursing home for the duration of life. It doesn't need to be infinite in duration. It could be a recoverable scenario. Our baseline, you've see, seen all these statistics before. Long and the short of this thing is funding is an issue. And if you've been around for a while, you understand the impact of inflation. And inflation is becoming more and more of an impact, especially this year when we've seen what's going on. And we think about the supply and the demand curve. With 10,000 seniors turning 65 a day, that's going to continue for a very long time. And that will put demand, stress on the system as those seniors move through the, the aging process and require care or assistance at home. Remember, the cost of care is going to vary by region, by the type of care you receive, and as I mentioned, that supply and demand. One thing that we have, One America have introduced a little while ago was our interactive map. Uh, if you want that, please uh, contact Tricia or uh, get in touch with me and I can send that to you. A couple of things to remember, and you've heard this over and over again, Medicare doesn't cover long-term care. People are gonna argue, well, I can get up to 100 days if you meet certain criteria. Medicaid does cover nursing home care, but generally home-based services are limited. Now there's been a trend toward introducing home-based services as a cover, coverable uh, expense, but they're not widely funded. And remember with Medicaid, you're into that spend down scenario, even with a partnership plan, you still have asset and income limits to, to, to uh, attain or not breach in order to receive those benefits. Remember, it's all about planning. And at One America, we have more solutions than we can shake a stick at. We call those solutions care solutions, and they're either on a life insurance chassis, which is called asset care, or an annuity chassis, fixed or, or uh, indexed, called annuity care. As you can see in front of you, our funding options are, are really quite abundant, and we can do a mix and match type of strategy where maybe we're dropping in a single premium for our base portion of the policy and then paying as you go for our continuation of benefits rider. Now here's how it works. That base policy is either life insurance or annuity pro product. That continuation of benefit rider is defined in 7702B of the code, internal revenue code as long-term care. That continue of benefit, continuation of benefit rider is bolted onto the back and it can be either funded out of the same source or independently. Now, this being said, when claims are paid from, from asset care, we reduce the death benefit dollar for dollar by that claim paid until we exhaust that and then the continuation of benefit rider steps in. Annuity care works on a similar premise. However, we're reducing the account value for the annuity dollar for dollar until we expend that value, then the continuation of benefit rider steps in. So let's talk about the annuity care options. And the first thing I want you to know here, and here's your idea number one. So this is actually pre-idea one, but it's important for me to note to you, look at your clients that are over the age of 70 and under the age of 85. We'll write annuity care up to the age of 85. These contracts generally are one out of surrender, but two, they've been around for quite a bit of time. And the value for annuity care is to transfer, transfer and transform those tax deferred accumulations 
into tax-free long-term care. The thing you want to do is when you're looking at non-qualified deferred annuities, and these have to be non-qualified, you want to talk to your client and ask them what those annuities are intended for. If they're not intended for income, and if they're not being currently utilized for income, they may be a viable opportunity to exchange into that better solution. Why do I say it's a better solution? Well, with annuity care, I mentioned we can transfer transfer those gains into tax-free distributions. That's made possible by the Pension Protection Act, which we're gonna go over in a minute. But that simply there washes it away. But adding on that continuation of benefit rider, we can take $100,000 and maybe create an unlimited benefit pool. If most of your clients are like the 70 odd percent of the people in a Gallup survey that said that their non-qualified deferred annuity is for an emergency healthcare fund, they're a great candidate for this. So when you're talking to your clients and doing client policy reviews or plan reviews, review everything and honestly and earnestly consider what options may be there as it relates to funding. Now remember, this is all made possible by the Pension Protection Act, which was introduced over a decade ago. ago. Introduced meaning it came into play. So let's look at this example. We have a non-qualified deferred annuity with $150,000 of current day value. It started with $50,000 of basis and over time it's earned. So we have 100,000 a gain. In any scenario in this world, when a distribution is made, taxes are paid on the withdrawal and it's a LIFO scenario. So you're paying taxes on your gain. One way or another, that amount is going to be taxed if it's for income or if it's for a long-term care situation. But what if we're saying, hey, this $150,000 is earmarked for my emergency situation and I'm going to liquidate it. Would you rather have that $150,000 taxed and reduce flexibility and impact any means-tested benefits or tax-free? If it's a long-term care event, those monies are tax-free. If we exchange it into a HIPAA-qualified PPA-eligible annuity, which is called annuity care. So that 1035 exchange will roll those proceeds into that and create tax-free long-term care benefits. That will continue to earn a modest rate and accumulate year over year, depending on whether you want to a fixed strategy or an index strategy that'll grow however however it does but it will create the opportunity to provide tax-free long-term care benefits and remember by adding that continuation of benefit rider we can turn that hundred fifty thousand dollar 1035 exchange into an unlimited pool of benefits so let's talk about a scenario here with annuity care one annuity care one is our flagship product from 1988. I call it flagship from 1988 because this was the first thing that got everything started in the industry. Our current day flagship product is indexed annuity care. And I'm only going to reference that in periphery because I want to focus on the ease of this concept. So pay attention to this. Our client is 83 years old and she has that $150,000. And all we're going to do is 1035 exchange it from her existing non-qualified deferred annuity into annuity care one. And instantly she gets day one, dollar one of policy issue, $4,400 of tax-free long-term care benefits for up to 36 months. Now I hope you look at the rightmost column and you'll notice that year over year, those monthly benefits will step up. It's got modest growth right around one and a quarter percent but the point of the matter is we're transforming those taxable distributions into tax-free by simply moving it. If she never utilizes it and she passes away, the proceeds move on just like any other death benefit. Now, remember, the annuity death benefit is the account value. The life insurance death benefit is a specified amount. So we are talking about the annuities. Another thing to consider. I mentioned it before and I'm gonna mention again, is our continuation of benefit rider. With annuity care one, 
our base benefit is for 36 months. You just saw that. If it's a joint policy, it's for 39 months. Now I want you to pay attention. I said a joint contract. That joint policy is husband and wife. If you were to apply for just a base only policy, nine questions on the application, both husband and wife have to be, uh, be able to complete and pass that underwriting. If we wanna add our continuation and benefit rider, we can either double the pool of money or create a lifetime benefit, plain and simple. Now in New Jersey, we don't offer annuity care too, but in Pennsylvania and every other state we do. And I'm gonna show an example of annuity care too, just for the ease of how it works, but the same principle is applicable for annuity care one and indexed annuity care. Now with annuity care two, it's only limited to, a, to doubling the long-term care benefit. With index annuity care and annuity care one, again, I can create an unlimited lifetime benefit for both Mrs. Client and Mr. Client. So let's look at this. Here's our unlimited pool. Again, this is for that 83-year-old uh, uh, client with $150,000 via IRA rollover, uh, via rollover. No, uh, no IRA, just a 1035 exchange. That IRA rollover conversation is going to be later in the uh, in the presentation. What you'll see here is on a monthly basis, the it's been reduced a bit because we added that continuation of benefit rider to fund an unlimited benefit. In this scenario, she starts with 3580 in day one, dollar one dollars. If she wanted an unlimited lifetime benefit, she can get that. Now a lot of people are going to say, okay, look, she's 80 something years old. What are the odds of that? I'm like, look, I, I, I don't know what the odds are, but I'm just showing you that I can add a lifetime income scenario, tax-free for long-term care to a client who's 83 years old. Here's a little competitive part in me. Find me another annuity that'll provide tax-free those dollars at that age for this client at this age and Show me. No one will do it, but we can. Let's look at a finite pool. We can do the same thing. And this is annuity care. And basically all we're doing is rather than having that unlimited duration, we're constraining it and saying we're going to double the pool. And you'll note that by constraining it and having an, more money working in the policy, we can provide a higher monthly benefit. Now remember, this can be done on an individual or a joint basis. If it's on a joint basis, the monthly benefit's going to be a bit lower because obviously there's a, a cost of insurance risk in there. The second part of this I wanna note is if Mr. and Mrs. Client both require care simultaneously, they can both receive up to that maximum monthly benefit. In this case, as, as you see here, it's 6242. Now, something to remember here, if our finite pool evaporates, we have no more. One person could use that whole benefit pool. If we have unlimited, that will continue for both of them for an, for an unlimited period of time. As I mentioned earlier, here's the impact of that second person on there. Sure, it's a drop down but it does provide a significant benefit tax-free for your clients. Remember, we're talking about a left pocket to right pocket transfer here utilizing an annuity solution. If that money is sitting in a non-qualified deferred annuity and it's not going to be touched, we can put it into a more favorable position where we can get those monies tax-free for long-term care. And if we never do, we just move it on. Let's talk about a 1035 exchange scenario. Oftentimes we come into this situation. We have a client who has a huge non-qualified deferred annuity and they only wanna take a little portion of it and pass it over to fund an annuity care product. Could be annuity care one, annuity care two, or indexed annuity care. If you wanna have a, a more detailed information on indexed annuity care, let Tricia or me know We'll schedule a, a uh, 
index annuity care specific webcasts so we can go over the ins and outs of that. But in this scenario, they only want to move 250,000, but the carrier won't allow for a partial exchange. It's a non-qualified deferred annuity and they don't, don't do that. So here's what you can do. We have a solution called the transfer annuity. It's a non-commissionable product. So what we're saying is, you know what? They don't want to give you part of your money, take it all. Pour it all into that transfer annuity. Then split that transfer annuity into two pieces or more. Fund the annuity care product, in this case, with $250,000. In that remaining $500,000, you can pass to any carrier, any company, any product, and continue on. So annuity care can take 250. You can send 250 into a VA and 250 into an index product. It's your choice. Remember that seven that transfer annuity, that 750 is in a parking lot, and we want to move it along pretty quickly within 30 days. So we've got a lot of stuff we can do on the annuity side, and just keep in the top of your mind. The underwriting for annuity care is never more than a phone interview. And if we're only doing a base policy, it's nine questions on the app. The objective of annuity care is to transform tax deferred accumulation into tax free distributions. Let's talk about asset care. Asset care got the whole ball rolling way back when in the late 80s. Our clients can range up to the age of 80. Generally speaking, someone who elects to utilize asset care is someone with some, who's had some success accumulating and they have decided to self-fund, but they're still concerned. Liquidity is not so much a concern, but long-term care is. And by long-term care, I'm not talking two or three years. Long-term to me is not two or three years. Long-term to me is six and beyond. And if you look at it from a pure perspective, from an investment perspective, 10 years and beyond, if you're looking at bonds as long-term. Everything beyond that is short. So if you're looking at a long bond, 10, 20, 30 years, where are you guys? If you're looking for a solution that utilizes qualified money, we're the only carrier that has a turnkey solution. I also have a separate webcast uh, that I've recorded that focuses on qualified money and all of the solutions that are available with One America, not just a turnkey, but all of the other solutions. If you'd like to see that, please reach out to Tricia or me, or we can schedule a qualified money specific conversation as well. So let's talk about our first opportunity here. And I'm gonna use a, a static example, and that's going to be a couple who are both the age of 65, looking for 5,000 a month of benefit. Why? At least there, the numbers will, will probably resonate with you. And by resonate, I mean, you're not gonna have a lot of moving parts. So in this case, what we're going to do is accelerate the death benefit at a rate of 2%, and add a lifetime continuation of benefit rider. Now remember, when we accelerate the death benefit at application, if it's a joint contract, we can choose two or three percent. Two percent will create a larger life insurance death benefit. Three percent will be smaller, but will create a larger monthly long-term care benefit. But I've elected two percent for a specific reason, which you're going to see in a few minutes. In this case, we're going to add that lifetime continuation of benefit price. Why? Because we're the only carrier that does it. And I often get asked, how do you compete with someone that offers a two plus four design, six years of benefit? I don't. I want to spin this around and say, how do they compete with me when I can offer an unlimited duration of benefit? And then inevitably the argument goes down to averages. And I just want to ask one question. Do you consider yourself average? And inevitably people say no. And my answer is, nor do I. So why do I wanna to play to the average? I wanna to play to the extreme if I can afford it. So to the point of the recurring premium, premiums are guaranteed for every element of asset care and annuity care. 
So when we're funding on a recurring basis, five years, 10 years, 20 years, to age 95 for either the base or the continuation of benefit rider, what you see is what you get. Here's an important thing to remember. When you're building a retirement income plan, the one big element that we don't or un are unable to plan for is a healthcare expense. Healthcare expense can be in terms of premium or in terms of benefits received and liquidations from plans to afford both of those. If you consider long-term care premiums to be a healthcare expense, I just stabilized your plan by saying, you know what you're gonna pay for now until the end of your plan. What you see is what you get, zero premium risk. Sure, a lot of people are gonna say, well, that's just scare tactic. No, it's not a scare tactic, it's just a fact. We have zero premium risk. What's happened at other carriers won't happen here, and I don't really care what they've done because that's their experience and that's not ours at One America. Another point I wanna make, when you see a face amount with an asset-based product, unless there's a reduction due to a loan withdrawal or, or distribution for long-term care, and this is, uh, is not unique to One America, that face amount, what you see, will be the minimum paid out of that policy as a benefit for long-term care, as a death benefit, or a combination thereof. When I say a combination thereof, let me just say it this way. If your client pulls $100,000 for long-term care, then passes, that balance, $150,000 will, will be paid tax-free as a death benefit. Now, we at One America offer a joint contract. We also offer an individual contract. The difference between the two is a joint contract is survivorship, meaning we pay the death benefit on the death of the second insured versus an individual contract where obviously we pay at the death of that only insured. Other than that, the contract works exactly alike. We're participating whole life policy and again, premiums are guaranteed throughout, benefits are guaranteed throughout, and it's stable. In this example, we're gonna accelerate that death benefit at a rate of 2%, creating 60,000 a year or $5,000 per month. Now remember, this is a simple example. I haven't in included inflation, which are available for the whole contract or just for that continuation of benefit rider. But I've kept it simple just for a level long-term care benefit. If you wanna see uh, more variations of that, contract Tricia or me, and we can give you a hand. In this scenario, it's a joint contract. If, for example, we're paying to age 95, 13,760 a year, and Mr. Insured requires care, he can receive up to $5,000 a month for an unlimited duration of time. Five years later, his spouse requires care. She can receive $5,000 a month for that unlimited duration of time. At some point in time, there may be that over, overlap where he's receiving care and she's receiving care. They each receive that $5,000 a month because that's what their contract calls for. We don't split it in half. You get five, she gets five. If your client qualifies, meaning they're not in a table rated scenario, waiver premium is included in the policy. So if the first insured Mr. Client requires care, claim starts, premiums are waived for the duration of that claim. That claim could be two months, two years, two decades, that premium will be waived. If it only lasts two years for the sake of argument and we're in a, uh, a 10 pay scenario, we have four years left on the policy, we just pay those remaining four years. So waiver premium is included in this scenario. A couple of things I wanna point out to you. This is an actual illustration looking at that to age 95 scenario. But down here, I wanna point out something to you. And you'll see the annual long-term care premium. That is a deductible long-term care premium. Of course, your client needs to itemize 
and will be subject to the age-related table. But if they itemize, hit the AGI limit, they can deduct up to 3985 uh, according to what the uh, age-related table would be. Another feature I want to point out here on the right side, you can see, see what your inflation options are for AOB, which is your base portion of the policy, and your COB, which is your continuation of benefit rider. A final thing I want to do is point out inflation. Inflation can be 3 or 5%, always compound, but we can dial the duration of time, 20 years or unlimited. So there's a lot of flexibility in the plan design. And again, we're the only carrier that offers a joint product with unlimited durations of benefits. So let's look at this one as a single premium, exact same clients, but they're going to either dump in money via cash or 1035 exchange. Again, unlimited benefits, $250,000 guaranteed to be paid out in one, some way, shape or form, living benefit, death benefit or combination, exact same monthly benefits, 5,000 per person, and our single premium is via cash or 1035 of 17,178. We're not running to get you rich, but we're certainly building a plan to keep you from becoming poor. As you'll see here, we have the unlimited duration on the ledger and our guaranteed benefit. One thing I also want to note that since this is a power whole, whole life policy, the policy will endow in year, in this case, 56 at age 121. So this is something where I cut my teeth way back when, when I had hair, didn't know much and was wholesaling for the people across the river from you. Full return of premium. Full return of premium was a calling card that one America didn't really have up until a couple of years. But we introduced the only, the only takeaway here is if I want a full return of premium, I cannot offer a lifetime benefit. But what I can get is liquidity, day one, dollar one. So as you'll see right here on this ledger, our premium going in is 178, three and a quarter. Our death benefit is 356, and that's to maintain the long the uh, life insurance corridor in the definition of life insurance, which will sink down and drop to $250,000. That's normal operating procedure for life insurance when you're heaping in money on the front end. You've got to maintain that corridor so that you can maintain the favorable tax treatment for the life insurance death benefit. You'll note here cash surrender value starting in year one is 178. In year 20, it grows to 183 and continues on from there. Long and the short of this thing is we're going to guarantee the death benefit, uh, the uh, cash value, as long as the accumulation value is less than where it's at. And right around year 18 is when we start seeing the cash accumulation value surpass that of the guaranteed premium in the policy. When would you use this scenario? Well, if you're working with a, with a small company, maybe it's a, a, an LLC or a partnership or a small family-owned family -owned business where their concern is liquidity, this may be a good solution. And remember, this the single premium can count toward a long-term care potentially deductible individual expense as well. Let's talk about qualified money. I mentioned it before, and this is something I think every one of you should include in your conversation with a client. What are you going to do with your qualified money? How's it going to work? What's your plan for it? If it's not going to be used for income and you're going to wait to have to take RMDs at age 72, why don't we consider some alternatives? In this scenario, if we're working with qualified money, we can only work with clients that are 59 and a half or older. If they're un under that age, it doesn't really work out that well. Some folks have asked about using 72T distributions. That doesn't provide enough leverage for us to make that work. Meaning that the corridor is so small between 
the distribution and the leverage that we need to to uh, to ga gather to make that the premium even a viable uh, a viable candidate to to hit the mark. So in this case, we're going to look at that couple who's both age 65. We're going to look at rolling $186,000. Why? Well, because that's what's going to give us that $250,000 death benefit that we've been seeing with 500 5,000 a month for long-term care. Remember, this qualified money strategy can be applied to both an individual or a joint contract. And if that's a joint contract and one of those in, insured, say it's the IRA holder that's going to fund the policy, is uninsurable, we can still make it work for that spouse that is insurable. So we got some flexibility inside of this thing. So here's how our turnkey qualified money strategy works. We have our $186,000, can be an IRA, 401k, 403b, 457, but it's traditional IRA in this sense of the word. If we're working with a Roth anything, it doesn't work in this scenario because those distributions are already tax-free. So what we're gonna do is roll over that 186,000 and change into a One America solution. This is called One America's annuity funded whole life contract. Really, it's annuity funding asset care using qualified money. That IRA rollover falls into our funding annuity, which is a fixed deferred annuity. And we bonus 20% right on top. So that 186 gives us a nice pool of money to work with, 223,000 and change. Over a period of 10 years, we'll distribute those monies into asset care. Now, this distribution phase is where a 1099 is generated and taxes will be paid. So that IRA rollover, that 186 is a non-taxable event, but the funding phase becomes a taxable event. And this pays for both the base and the continuation of benefit rider. In this case, we're creating a joint policy with $250,000 of survivorship death benefit guaranteed to be $250,000 of life insurance, $250,000 of long-term care insurance, $250,000 of combination, plus an unlimited continuation of benefit rider, meaning both Mr. and Mrs. Client can never run out of benefits. In this scenario, the rollover funds $250,000 we liquidate it over at 2% over that 50 months, and then we create our long-term care benefit from our COB if it's needed. Those distributions from the asset care product, day one, day 1001, are tax-free. Let me repeat that. Those distributions when used for long-term care, regardless of when that occurs, will be tax-free. Now, those distributions also, once that client is 72 years old, can also count as RMDs. Of course, they may not meet the threshold for the full need, but they can count toward that. We can't provide a full accounting of that because we don't know all of the qualified money, but we will report those those distributions in accordance to the rules. Now it would come down to the uh, the client's uh, accountant to to manage the deductibility uh, if they're considering that and or uh, qualifying for the retired minimum distributions and the accounting for that. Remember on a joint contract, it's a second to die policy for death benefits. So if for the sake of argument, your client uses $100,000 of long-term care benefit, Spouse one, spouse two uses zero, and we have 150,000 a death benefit of that remaining. That will pass at the death of the second insured, tax-free to their beneficiaries, be it their family, their goldfish, a trust, or what have you. One thing I want you to note is the total death benefit in years one through nine, or actually one through eight, 
they uh, start high and reduce. Now, this is not the same reason uh, as I mentioned earlier, which is to maintain the definition of life insurance. This is simply an aggregate of the death benefit of $250,000 and the balance of that qualified deferred annuity. So for the sake of argument, and let's say at the end of year four, both Mr. and Mrs. Client pass, the death benefit that you see is 352,104. 250,000 of that will be tax free. The 100,000 of that or 102,000 of that will be taxed as an qualified money at distribution. And remember, the SECURE Act only allows you to stretch it over 10 years, which creates an opportunity that I didn't mention in here. Think about this. Since this is a 10-pay funding scenario, and it's coming out of qualified money, if your client inherits an IRA, and we know we have to take those distributions over 10 years, here's a vehicle that they can utilize to create a protection strategy and fund a protection strategy for both them and their spouse without money coming out of pocket. Granted, it's coming out of the inheritance for the stretch IRA or uh, IRA because in the stretch format of 10 years, but it's a way to make this work. And again, recover some of that, that value that you would have had a road due to taxation. Again, that annual premium is guaranteed. Let's talk about underwriting, which, which is an advantage for us at One America. If you look at these maladies on the screen, generally, most of these will be severely rated or flat out declines for both the traditional or asset-based world. We're willing to consider these and many more. If you have underwriting questions and you want to know what's what's the likelihood of, of a client being approved for a certain malady or combination of maladies, please get in touch with Tricia or me and we can get with you to assess that. We have a one page uh, automatic decline for asset care and annuity care one pager that you can use with a client. We also have an underwriting guide that you can use, which is much more detailed. But certainly if you have anything tricky, use a pre-underwriting inquiry. We call it a PUI, P-U-I. And I would suggest that most cases, uh, especially if your client is 65 or older, we start the, the whole process by doing a pre-underwriting inquiry simply because we want to assess and see where we're at and maybe simplify things and say, okay, they won't qualify for asset care, that annuity care is their best option. But you complete that informal health survey, you can submit it to underwriting within a day, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a list of what your client can qualify for and what they may not be eligible for. The important part is it's not coming from me, it's coming from an underwriter. And with that information, we can craft a strategy that will most effectively address their needs and help you present the best solution the first time. Sure, we can't guarantee the result, but we certainly can get down the right road knowing that, hey, if we can at best offer a table seven with asset care, maybe using an annuity care, which would be unrated, would be better for, for your client. That's right, we can table rate out eight tables with asset care. No other carrier is doing that. Morbidity and mortality, eight tables. We're very aggressive. And I would challenge this. If you have a client that you think might be height weight challenged or have some combination of maladies that are, that are a challenge before you submit an application to anyone, Kick the tires with us at One America with a pre-underwriting inquiry. At a minimum, you get an idea of what, what you're looking at in terms of the risk. If we won't insure them, odds are you're not going to find a solution from any of our peers. So if you got a challenge, send it to us. 
here's a scenario and here's my bonus idea. It's called legacy care. This is off the ranch and not even long-term care. And the reason I'm throwing this up the flagpole to you is there's a no, it's no underwriting. And more importantly, each and every one of us knows at least one client that may fall in this category. We have an older client, somewhere 85 or older, with an existing non-qualified deferred annuity that's about to mature. So you're faced with a simple problem of, do we take the money or do we take the money? Let's say this annuity matures at age 90. We're talking about a value of $325,000. We've got our choice. We have our choice of annuitizing it and pay the distributions on the gain over a period of time or take it as a lump sum. That's your only option. But that's not. If your client has that maturing annuity and they don't need it for income, odds are they've had it for 20, 30 years, especially at this age, then intent is to pass it forward. Well, let's keep it earning. 1035 exchange into legacy care. Legacy care is a deferred annuity with a modest crediting rate of 1%. It's current and guaranteed, but that's not the issue. The issue here is I can help your client not have to create a taxable event, impact their income or any means tested benefits there, and they can keep that annuity rolling until they pass it along. As a bonus, regardless of age, we have a chronic illness rider, but that's not the reason for selling legacy care. The reason for selling legacy care is it creates the opportunity on the backside to pass that money on just like they always had wanted. So remember, older client, maturing annuity, legacy care, call us, no underwriting. So you want ideas, here's my contact information. You can also contact Tricia. I suggest you start contacting with, but start trying to contact me by contacting Tricia, simply because she knows how to track me down. Worked with me long enough to know she can get to me pretty quickly. But if you're looking for ideas, solutions, I'm your guy. I got a ton of them. If you want to have an idea every Friday in your inbox, sign up for my Fridays with Fisher or go to fridayswithfisher.com. I've got four years worth of ideas in the library there. If you want a live idea or conversation or information, every Tuesday at 10 a.m., a new episode of LTC Coffee Break is put up on our website, ltccoffeebreak.com. The first Tuesday of every month will be, will be a bigger one with a lot more meat and content to it. Every other, every other Tuesday, it's going to be three to five minutes with something. Coming up in September, I would say probably be a good time to tune into LTC Coffee Break because I have both my internal Justin Fox and my ACE case manager Ben Schwipp scheduled where we're going to talk about process and how to make things move more smoothly for a solid year end. The last thing is we do offer virtual consumer seminars. That virtual consumer seminar is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. rain or shine. It's going to happen. If you want more information on that, you can scan the QR code that you can see in front of you, or you can go to ltccoffeebreak.com and click the virtual consumer seminar link, and that'll give you everything that you uh, want to know about that. One last thing, and I'll open this up to questions in like two seconds. I want to thank you for your time. Hopefully, I gave you a little bit of an idea of uh, of what we can do, uh, some opportunities for us, some opportunities for you, and most importantly, my encouragement to you: so don't be sh don't be shy. Grab the phone, ask me for input, suggestions, whatever. I want to help you, help your clients, and put solutions in place. Tricia, what do you have for questions? If you have any.
Wow, I do have a couple questions. That was a lot of information. Uh, one big question. Yes, this is being recorded. If you want the replay, just reach out to me and I can get that to you. I know people were trying to jot notes down fast and furious and just <laughs> couldn't keep up. So that's why it's recorded. We've got the replay available. One question is uh, on the joint contract, what relationship does it have to be beyond spouse? Can it be parent, child, business partners? Great question. It has to be a spouse or an impending spouse, someone that, you know, or significant other. Um, it can be same sex. Now, a few years back, uh, we were a lot more uh, broad in our definition of that joint contract, but we've, uh, we have now limited to that, that domestic scenario. There is a 25 year age span. So if you have a, a, a husband who's 60 and, and the wife who's 30, that won't work. Um, but 25 years is our gap in that. Okay. Uh, a question about using qualified funds. One spouse has to be 59 and a half. What if the other spouse is not? As long as that money is coming from the spouse that's 59 and a half, we can make it work. Now, from an illustration standpoint, we would have to run that illustration. So you're going to have to get with, uh, you, you're, you'd have to get with us uh, to to support you on that one. Good question. That's a really good question. Okay. And then a question: Can you move a qualified IRA into annuity care? You can. However distributions from that qualified portion let's let's just say the base portion is annuity care mm -hmm. and that's the qualified money that's going to be taxed at a, as as a distribution so it will be taxed just like qualified money if if you're adding a continuation of benefit rider that continuation of benefit rider would have to be funded from non-qualified sources so out of your pocket which will create your tax free benefit so basically what you'd be doing is establishing your IRA, I'm gonna call it your asset care IRA for the sake of our, or annuity care IRA, my, my apologies, uh, as your primary funding vehicle, be it two, two years, three years to, to liquidate and your continuation of benefit rider being funded as an outside source as your tax-free distribution. You're basically self-funding the first two or three years. And then when the COB kicks in, if it's lifetime, you've got the, that infinite pool on the backside. Is it a good strategy? Some people it is, some people it isn't. It really allows you to put in a, a firewall, if you will, or a stop loss point for someone that uh, that is uh, concerned about longevity, but isn't really convinced that it's really gonna be them. All right, um, kind of scrolling through the questions. A lot of them were about recordings and slides. Uh, I do believe that's it. I'm just gonna give everybody another minute or so because a lot of questions came in uh, towards the end. So continue, can continue to type the questions in. I know we've given a lot of information in a short period of time. Uh, no, the product is not in New York. Correct. getting ready to type that question that's <laughs> kind of standard it is not in new york but new york is the only jurisdiction where we do not offer the product but if your client has a second residence outside of new york Correct. where they pass what i've created as the close in a closet test you can write it there if the meaning they have a property that they own that is not just a rental property they keep clothes in a closet 365 days a year you can write it in that state as well. Yeah, timeshare won't qualify. Mobile home right. won't qualify. RV, not happening. No. But, uh, or a property that they use, that they rent out to others. Correct. Yeah, ran into that problem once. Um, okay, I do believe that is about it. So I'm just gonna wrap it up and thank everyone for taking time out this afternoon. I know it was a lot of information, but I really appreciate you sticking with it. I hope you got at least one or two sales ideas or had a client come to mind and say, wow, that might be a good solution for them. 
I really look forward to talking to you about the solution for that client, running some illustrations, and seeing how these solutions really translate into protection for your client. You can reach me here in the office, 800-524-1774. I look forward to talking to you soon. And Kevin, thank you so much for putting all of that information together and getting through it. When I saw those slides, I was like, there's no way we're getting through it. But you did it as always. So everyone have a wonderful afternoon and stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Have a great day.